I've been traveling solo in various forms for the numerous years now, but I wasn't always confident in going by myself to different locations. You may or may not know I have a twin sister and although I love being a twin, one of the downsides is you can develop a codependency and have kind of anxiety doing things on your own because you're so used to in everything that you've done from living, going to school, even in college we had the same job. We were constantly doing things together. We had many of the same friends. So developing kind of that independence of doing it on your own without feeling any sort of stress or anxiety really did not come easy. It wasn't until we graduated college when Kelly moved out of state and I got an apartment by myself that we really kind of did our own things. And since then I've been exercising that muscle and building the confidence to travel solo to many different destinations. In today's video I want to talk about how you can build your confidence and progress in your, the various stages of traveling solo. You may be at many different levels depending on where you feel comfortable or your confidence but we'll start at the very basic low level if traveling solo or being by yourself causes you high anxiety and it sounds very stressful then starting at the very bottom with exploring your own hometown by or city by yourself is the first step what i like to do kind of as a very entry level activity is going to the movies going to the movie theater by yourself i think that's the perfect activity to do by yourself you can do that in your hometown if you have a theater in your hometown and you won't get strange looks from other people being like why are you here by yourself no one's gonna notice the lights dim the movie comes on, no one's going to be looking at you. So you can start slow and build your confidence by first going to the movie theaters. The next activity that I want you to try in your hometown is going to a restaurant, eating out by yourself. We view eating out as a very social activity. So I think it can be very nerve wracking, the thought of going to a restaurant and eating by yourself, not to mention feeling bored or trying to constantly entertain ourselves. So going to a restaurant by ourselves just doesn't sound pleasant. So that's why I say start in your hometown, go to a restaurant and start getting used to eating by yourself. You can first start at the bar at the restaurant and chit chat with the bartender. It's very hard to notice someone sitting at the bar by themselves if the restaurant's packed and there's a lot of people at the bar it's not as obvious that you're by yourself so that could be a good entry level step into eating out by yourself then you can move on to eating at a table to help get your confidence up at eating at a table at a restaurant by yourself i want you to look at making a reservation first at the restaurant Making a reservation using Open Table, the Resi app, or any other reservation site that that restaurant uses will help form a commitment to yourself that you're gonna go to the restaurant and sit at a table and eat by yourself. You can always cancel the reservation, but that's just an added layer to help push you to go eat out at a restaurant. Oftentimes the reservation apps have a minimum party number of two, Go ahead and select two people in the party, even if it's, you're just a party of one. You can tell the hostess or wait till you get seated and tell your server that you can make up an excuse, your friends bailed on you or that it's only just going to be you. And that's typically not an issue. Once you get seated at the table, there are many different things that you can do to help entertain yourself or to focus on. If it's a sports bar or a restaurant that has TVs, you can focus on the TVs that are in the restaurant. You can bring a book or a journal to focus your attention on. I like downloading ebooks from my local library on the Libby app so I can read on my phone. 
or you can listen to a podcast, bring your headphones and plug in and watch a show on your phone if you want. So there's different ways you can entertain yourself. Now, once you have successfully explored your hometown by yourself and passed that entry level, stressful, anxiety inducing, feeling that you get by being by yourself, you can move on to the next step, which is taking a day trip from your hometown that's within driving distance, usually one to two hours. So visit a city that's one to two hours away that you can drive and explore that city by yourself, doing similar activities. You can go to the movies, eat out at a restaurant. So the point is to build that muscle and continuing doing repetitions of the same thing by yourself so you can build up your confidence to do this continually by yourself. So explore that city. The benefit of it being a couple hours away from your hometown is that when you're exhausted or if you feel like your anxiety is really rising and you're very uncomfortable, it's not a huge ordeal to then just make the drive back home. But go venture out a couple hours away. Once you build the confidence to do a day trip from your hometown, then you can go to the next step of doing an overnight trip still within driving distance. So doing an overnight trip just adds that extra layer of being by yourself for longer in a new city and also navigating a lodging accommodation, whether it's at a hotel or an Airbnb, kind of getting experience of going through those processes by yourself as well. Once you feel good that you can do overnight trips that are within driving distance and that's not an issue, you can go to the next step of looking at a weekend trip at a city in which you have to fly to that city so that you're taking away the easy access of being able to then drive back home. We are in control or have power when we have our own vehicle. We are in charge of where we go. We can kind of go anywhere we want. When you take that away and you are now flying at a destination, it's not as easy to just come back home. So it kind of ramps up the intensity of being by yourself flying to that destination since it's a little bit more challenging. And again, you're getting experience of getting on a plane, going through airport and the flying process by yourself. Assuming that you have flown before, uh, if you haven't flown before, maybe take a trip with a friend or family member uh, on a plane before you try that solo but if you feel confident you can do that solo, then do that by yourself. While you are building up your confidence and experiencing these new cities, whether these are the day trips that you're driving to or flying to for overnight weekend stays or longer, other activities that you can incorporate into your trip can include a tour. Those are a great option or activity where you can meet other people, not feel so alone because you're with other people and experience that city or that site, whatever the tour is going over. You can experience that, get that history in, get that information and meet other people. I like doing at least one tour a day in whatever destination that I'm at helps me get some social interaction, but tours can be a great activity to kind of combat that loneliness when you are traveling by yourself. After you feel confident that you can do trips by yourself in which you are flying still within your own country, but flying to other cities, then you can take the next step of looking at an international trip. Again, if you have not taken an international trip before. You may want to go on an international trip first with a travel partner, friend or family, to kind of get that experience with someone else before you do that on your own. But once you have gone on an international trip with a friend or a family member, you could look at going on an international trip solo. I would recommend looking at a country that speaks the same language as your native language or speaks a language that you're familiar with or have experience with. So if you know, if you have experience with the second language, you can certainly look at a country with that, within that second language. But to help limit the number of new experiences that you're going through by yourself, 
looking at a country that speaks your native language, if that's English or a language that um, you have experience with, can help be one less thing that you feel like is something new that you have to deal with on your own. Now, after you feel confident traveling to other countries with the same language or uh, language you're familiar with, then you can go to the ultimate travel goal of traveling to another country that is in a different language that you do not have experience or exposure with. If that's your ultimate goal. If that's not your ultimate goal, then that's up to you. But that's kind of the progression that I would go through to build up your confidence. Now, depending on where you're at in that progression, you can do that trip as many times as you need to to build up your confidence and to reduce your stress and anxiety so it's not a one trip and done move to the next step do that trip do that day trip as many times as you need do that overnight within driving distance as many times as you need do the domestic flying trip as many times as you need to feel confident that you can travel by yourself before moving on to the international trips. And if you don't wanna go international, that's totally fine too. Those are some great steps to get you to whichever ultimate goal you want to do in traveling solo. As I mentioned, some good activities for any trip that you take include doing a tour, whether that is a walking tour, food tour, tour of a historic homes. There's so many different tours that you can do to help combat feeling alone because you're with a group, your boredom, and to experience the new city that you're in. You can also explore the city on your own. And if you want to do that while listening to a podcast or an ebook or an audiobook, or not an ebook, you don't want to be reading and walking, that's not safe. <laughs> listening to a podcast or an audiobook helps give you the kind of that distraction and get your mind off of the thoughts of being alone, being by yourself, and focuses your attention more on what you're listening to and what you're seeing. Something to mention is that you don't have to fill your days with activities. There is nothing wrong with staying in your Airbnb or your hotel by yourself and kind of recharging, regrouping, relaxing. You don't constantly have to be out on the go. I think oftentimes we think our trips, we since we're visiting a new place, we have to cram as much in as possible but keeping in mind that when you are traveling by yourself, you are making all the decisions by yourself. You don't have a travel partner that you can rely on to help out when you're unsure of yourself. So that can drain you of energy by making all those decisions yourself, along with depending on how many new experiences you're experiencing. If you're doing an international trip and it's a completely different culture, different language, that can all be draining. We don't take into consideration how much new experiences can drain us of our energy. So it is okay to spend some time in your lodging and accommodations by yourself to recharge. That is okay. And we can't talk about traveling solo without talking about safety. So you do want to keep in mind that being by yourself does open you up to more vulnerabilities and can compromise your safety. So some tips, do not advertise that you were on your trip by yourself. Don't, no one needs to know that. You can make up excuses or just don't give that information out. If someone is aware or knows that you are by yourself, that just makes it way too easy for them to take advantage of you or for something to happen. So. Don't advertise it, don't tell people that you are on the trip by yourself. Make sure that you have communications with friends and family. So whether you're within your own country or on an international trip, make sure that you have a fully charged cell phone and the capabilities to charge it. So remember to bring your charger and a portable power bank, as well as make sure that you have a cell cellular plan and a data plan so that in the event of an emergency, you can call for help or contact your friends or family and uh, be in communication. 
I know sometimes people don't want to pay the extra for an international data plan when they go abroad or for a cellular plan, but sometimes it is worth that added expense to keep yourself safe if something happens or you need help. For transportation, if you're going to be in a taxi or a ride share like Lyft or Uber, make sure that you are confirming licenses. So taxis, they all have standard license that allow them to provide a taxi service. The ride share apps such as Uber or Lyft have security features that allow you to share your ride with a friend or family member. So once you start a ride, that person is sent your driver's detail information along with a map that they can follow your route and know that you made it to your destination safely. So make sure that you are selecting those security features to help protect yourself in case something happens, someone else is notified of your whereabouts. Speaking of being notified of your whereabouts, I like to upload all of my travel documents my itinerary and everything onto a shared drive such as Google Drive and share it with my sister. So no matter where I'm going, whether it's within the United States or in another country, she knows kind of a rough idea of my itinerary, where I'm staying, she has a copy of my passport and driver's license. If I got travel insurance, she has a copy of that. So if something happens to me, she has access to all those documents as well in case she needs them. So that is the progression that I have kind of followed to help me build my confidence, help me reduce my anxiety and stress when I travel solo, and some things that I do as far as keeping myself entertained and safe. Leave me a comment down below if there are things that you do when you travel solo that I didn't mention so that we can all learn from everyone's experiences, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao for now!